What's up, everyone? Brendan Patrick here from Arsenal Pass, here to give you a quick Viserai deck tech. So this is a list that I played in the Battle Hardened recently. Fortunately, that was before the Battle Hardened uh, was an ELO event. So um, didn't get the scoop of the ELO there, but I did do pretty well. Lost in the semis um, eventually, but it was, a good, you know, it was a good tournament on the day, and I feel like the deck performed really well. So um, yeah, let's just talk a little bit about the list. Nah, through some editing magic, we're going to go ahead and flash it on the screen real quick. Um, if you want to look at it uh, in more detail, there will be a FabDB link, so go ahead and click that and you can follow along. There is some spice in this list, <laughs> particularly the, uh, the Tome of the Arknight. That was really put in there just because I thought it was kind of funny on the day, and actually, I wasn't really taking the tournament too seriously, but um, yeah, I mean, it did, it did perform <laughs> for the day. Uh, the, the list is a 20 non-attack action and attack action split, so perfect down the middle. You can go 19, 21, up to you, but I wouldn't deviate uh, much farther than that. So for the deck, um, the deck was kind of initially discovered with uh, Matt Fox. I think we all kind of know that list by now. Um, I think it was you know it was mostly kind of a reverse engineer of the classic constructed deck that we've been working on, um, you know, at the beginning of the Everfast meta. Uh, and yeah, it performs pretty much the same, but at twenty life and with a higher density of good cards. So uh, I think the deck is actually much more powerful in Blitz, which is nice. Um, so in terms of win rate and just for spiking events, I think that Viscera is probably the best deck to play right now. Uh, mostly because what it's trying to do is pretty much non-interactive, and you kind of just do it every game. Your opponent doesn't really matter that much. Old Him does kind of throw a wrench in that, and I guess Kano to an extent. But ultimately, um, once you learn the lines, you just kind of you know, do your thing, combo off turn two, kill your opponent. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but it's okay for, <laughs> for winning tournaments, I guess. Um, but yeah, to... Just talk a little bit more on that or just touch on it. This deck is all about knowing complex viscerai lines. When you have become the Arknight and Rattlebones in your deck, it does create a lot of complicated decision trees. So I think that a lot of those lines are going to be out of the scope of this video, but in order to play the viscerai deck effectively, you do need to practice, but <laughs> you can goldfish because like I said, the opponent and kind of what's going on in the game is not super relevant. So learn the lines first, practice, and I think you'll do very well with this deck. And... Yeah, my kind of final thoughts on the deck are that it's unfair and that does not function as design intended. So probably we'll get a change soon, but for now, I'm going to scoop those wins. So let's talk about gameplay. It's really important. A lot of players, they kind of, they pick up this deck, right? And they don't understand exactly what it's trying to do. The deck does have mid-range cards in it, but it's not a mid-range deck. So any anytime you're kind of going Marvin Skies, attack action, swing the blade, that's a great exchange on cards for damage. But... <laughs> It's usually the wrong thing to do, actually. Um, unless your opponent is, of course, old him and maybe you're grinding out the rest of the game. That's actually the biggest mistake most players make. You are a combo deck. You are trying to Sonata with a lot of rune chance and then overwhelm your opponent with too much damage where they can't even block with their entire hand, right? A little bit of chip damage here and there is good, but there is really just kind of one, one way you're trying to win the game. So you need to sort of double down on that. Um, and yeah, that is how the deck wins. So understanding how the deck wins... Don't, don't try to be something you're not. You're a combo deck. 90% of the time, you're going to be comboing people um, and killing them from some sort of high life total. And yeah, that's really just how you win the game. Playing anything outside of that, you know, maybe going for value, popping the rune chance before you should, um, that's going to lead to more losses than wins. And it was definitely something that I had to learn. So a key thing to understand when you're playing Viscera is understanding speed. Um, so you need to be ready to kill your opponent on the first turn or the second turn, pretty much every game. If you get to the third turn, it's a bit more dicey. Of course, you can go there. You can go deep into the game as well, especially against something like Old Him. But you, when you're goldfishing this deck or you're playing it and you're trying to learn it, you need to be setting up and thinking about how do I win this game in two turns? You know, on the play, it's maybe make some rune chance, go to your next turn, kill the opponent. That's really how fast it is. Um, so yeah, like I said, chip damage is relevant to that, but ultimately it is setting up those rune chance, popping that Scalata, maybe getting that big Sonata and looking at all those cards and just overwhelming your opponent. Okay, so let's quickly talk about equipment here. There is quite a bit of equipment in the deck, obviously because it's Blitz, but in my opinion, a lot of it isn't relevant. So of course we have Scalata, which is the engine of the deck. Then we have Quill Hand, which is uh, a part of that engine. And also I think <laughs> actually the, the broken card that sort of pushes deck over the edge. It's a bit innocuous because it is just create two rune chance, go again. But rune chance are just so much more than damage um, in the Viscera deck, right? They reduce the, 
uh, the cost of your cards. They look, let you look at more cards, let you get more card advantage sometimes. So Quill Hand just, it's a really, really powerful. And I think that it's probably one of the cards that needs to go, if anything, if they don't hit the engine. Yeah, so next I want to move on to Hope Earned His Hood. Um, this is the most significant addition to the deck that has happened recently. Uh, and it just goes back to everything that I've been talking about. You, you have one way to win the game, um, and you just got to double down on that, right? Your deck wins the game by finding a few kind of good cards, and the rest of the cards are really replacement level at that. So you just need to find your, your Morgentides, your Sonatas, you become the Arc Knights, um, and you need to pop off, you need a combo. And Hope Merchant Hood's going to give you a higher chance to do that, and you know, maybe a free bowl again as well. So very, very good card. Um, and finally, Spellbound Creepers. We all know how powerful this card is by now, but... Yeah, Spellbound Creepers uh, against an opponent that has 20 or less life. Very, very strong. Don't be afraid to use them aggressively. Next is, um, I don't have it on the board, but it's Skullcap, right? So Skullcap, you're going to see a lot of Viscerize play this. I'll sometimes play it on the draw, but with the power of Hope, Mer <laughs> the power of Hope Merchant's Hood, I actually think it might just be incorrect all the time now. But yeah, you can play it against opponents that have on-hit triggers, or maybe you're on the draw, and you think you're going to be a bit more defensive because you can't create that turn zero, like four rune chance or something like that. Next is Grasp, which I actually never play, but a lot of Viscerite players do play it, can help against Old Him. Um, I just, I'm a big proponent of Vex and Quill Hand. I think that it's, uh, it's pretty unfair. Um, you have Null Run 3 in the deck. Uh, that does include Vex and Quill Hand. You can play that against Kano, or you can just play the Null Run Run with the Quill Hand and race them. Um, I'll opt for the latter strategy, mostly if I'm on the play. Not the draw, but this is a matchup that I need more testing in. And I think that, you know, maybe just racing Kano on the Delta you probably are just more consistent and do more damage and they have to get a bit luckier when you present them with, you know, 15 damage on turn one or something like that, or 25. So just need more testing there. Gambler's Gloves are for KO um, and the Suede Hides. I would never play them unless maybe, maybe, maybe I was in top eight. I knew my opponent was on a fatigue only strategy. Um, and yeah, I had something to worry about because of that. But even then, probably wrong. <laughs> Next, let's go ahead and talk about the meta. So the first thing you're going to run into a lot is the mirror. <laughs> so you're going to want to choose to play first if you can. It's extremely significant to your win rate, um, in my opinion. And on that turn zero, you're going to want to make rune chance and then likely set up for a kill on turn two, which might sound a bit ridiculous if you haven't played the deck yet, but uh, it's pretty consistent. You can probably do it most of the time. So yeah, going first is what you want to do. If you do have to be on the draw, um, don't be afraid to creepers in like your read the runes on your opponent's turn if they decide to attack you or aggressively block with cards in your hand to filter, even if you end up taking two on like a blade or something if it has to go again. Like you need to find your good cards. That's it. There's a few cards in the stack that you want to have in your hand. The others, it doesn't really matter. The kind of replacement. If you draw a handful of those bad cards, uh, that's how you lose games. Next is Kasai. There's going to be, so my tournament in particular, there was a lot of Kasai, very popular in the meta. I actually think it's your best matchup. And I've been a little bit vocal how I think it's the worst deck. <laughs> it kind of like in Blitz as well, which I know is fighting words. But yeah, Kasai just can't kill you fast enough, right? They can't present enough damage. They do have on-hit triggers, I guess, but they don't really matter for what you're trying to do. This whole create copper, play blood in, blood in her hands or whatever, is too slow and you should kill, you should kind of kill Kasai before she kills you every single time. You can't opt to play armor if you are worried about um, on-hit triggers with that. Next is Oldham, which I think is one of the harder matchups uh, in the meta, but that's mostly because Oldham can kind of dynamically pivot between strategies. It can be a defensive deck, can be an aggressive deck. Um, so your strategy into that deck is somewhat contextual on the board state, but that being said, I still think that you should kind of combo off aggressively when you can get decent value. A uh, big mistake a lot of people make with this deck is not combing off fast enough and just holding back on their Scalata or Sonata. Like sometimes you don't even pop, uh, you don't even Sonata when you are using Scalata, right? You're just using it for reduction and coming in with like a 25 damage turn. Like that's a lot in Blitz. And then you can kind of squeak it out with your non-attack action, attack action blade, which is tough for Oldham to consistently block. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Kano. <laughs> Kano, I think, is the hardest, uh, the hardest match currently in the meta, but that's, it's hard to say. Maybe with more testing, I could have more data there. But like I said, Nolan 3, you can play that. Um, or you can play Nolan Run and just race them. If you play Nolan Run and race them and you find your good cards, you're going to be asking that Kano player's deck to sort of give them a lot because they're going to have to go off quite quickly. So I think the variance might actually favor you if you're on the play doing that strategy. Next is uh, Reinar, Mechanologist, and then whatever the heck else is out there. You should just be faster these deck than these decks. Um, you should win. These matches should not be too hard. You can definitely lose to a, like a, a competent aggro deck like Reinar or even Mechanologist. 
but still on average, I think you should be faster and then choosing to play. This deck pretty much uses to play every single time, right? Make the rune chance, next turn, kill them. All right, so someone is the meta inside the meta, <laughs> kind of, right? I just want to talk about like your, your opponent as a player kind of does matter. So I had this story in the Battle Harden where I was actually in the semifinals. My opponent came in with a little bit of damage um, on his turn zero and I, I blocked. And then he just, you know, he went to Arsenal and he has his five cards. It's like, okay, goes to my turn one, right? I've done nothing so far. I have no rune chance, none of that. Um, I play Yellow Marvin Skies, Red Spellblade Assault. So this means that I'm going to make two, or sorry, three rune chance, Viscera Trigger plus Spellblade Assault. If it hits two more, that two more is a lot. My opponent would need to block with a card plus armor to block it, opts to do no blocks. What does that tell me? It tells me that from 20, because my opponent made rune chance on the first turn, has that five card hand, which they're preserving, I'm dead. I'm dead 100%. So after that, I have to go ahead and pop, um, I have to pop my Scalata off of like a couple root, like barely any rune chance, um, Sonata, and just go for the kill. Cause you know, like it's so unlikely that you're going to win in that situation and that your opponent doesn't just have like some ridiculous lethal on you. Um, but yeah, in that situa situation, I ended up getting him to like two or something. And then he hit me for like, I don't know, 35 or something ridiculous on the, on the following turn. So it's just important to, to sort of take note of what your opponent's doing, how they're playing their cards, um, and realize that you might just not have time. So you have to go for it and have to get lucky. So there's a few tips and tricks to sort of elevate your game. I think these are going to be the most important. First ones here is going to be that Hope Merchant's Hood. You want to find your combo as fast as possible, and you're going to be doing that every game. I know I've said it a few times, but Hope Merchant's Hood allows you to do that. Don't be scared to use it, and use it aggressively. That shouldn't be sitting on the board. I've used it on turn, um, you know, turn zero, turn one, whatever it is. Um, this unlocks so much for this deck, so just use it when you can. Next is going to be creepers. So, and specifically creepering for two action points when you already have going in. This actually happened to be in that semifinals game as well. So I played that uh, Marvin Sky Spellblade Assault. I have go again. And then I opted to play the Scalata Sonata. Um, and I actually paid one to see an extra card in Sonata. So what I could have done is I could have uh, activated my spell on creepers, creeped in the Sonata, gotten two action points, and then... I would have those two action points to, to play those unknown cards that come off the top of my deck. You do have a lot of Gogan cards in your deck, like these uh, meet and greets, Swarm Gloom Veils, Rune Flashes, um, things like that. But you would I would have had way more agency as the player if I had two action points in that situation. Um, and I, I would have killed my opponent. So it wasn't, it wasn't even totally results-oriented. Just looking back on it, it does seem strictly correct. Um, something to keep in mind because it was a play that I didn't even think about at the time, which is crazy. <laughs> I was so surprised because that was actually Michael Fang, uh, who I think won the calling... Calling Dallas or calling Cincinnati. Um, it definitely is calling... like It was one of them, whatever. He told me after, and I was like, wow, why would I do that? I'd go again. He was like, oh, no. But it's definitely correct in that situation. Usually it comes off the, uh, the Spellblade Assault. So next is, I just want to talk about these powerful cards, right? Uh, specifically, Morgatide. <laughs> Morgatide is the most powerful card in your deck, right? It doesn't really do anything on its own, but this unlocks so much. So it's a bit innocuous. I know we all know it's powerful, but you should really pr prioritize having this card um, and not blocking with it, not throwing it away for low value, um, especially on a Sonata turn. This card is ridiculous, so just keep that in mind. Also, just like your generic, you know, your other non-attack actions like the Become the Arknights, the Sonatas, the Rattlebones. Cards are very important. There's so much more powerful than just like a random Spellblade, uh, spellblade Strike or whatever it is. So keep that in mind. And yeah, your powerful cards, <laughs> go for those. Arsenal them, you know, kill them on the following turn. So cards to change and decklist changes if I was going to play another event with this. I'd probably take out the Tome of the Arknight. Maybe it doesn't make the maybe it doesn't make the cut, but it could as well. Uh, I'm not totally sure. I put it in my deck right because I thought it was funny and it ended up being really good. But obviously, you know, I'm not fixing the two cards on the top of my deck, so I just got a little bit lucky. Um, next is Ninth Blade. So there's one Ninth Blade in the deck. I'd actually probably play two Shrill of Skullhorns. Shrill of Skullhorn might just be like a strictly better card than Ninth Blade. Shrill of Skullhorn has a like a a Rune Blade downside where if you you have to have created the aura to get the plus uh, you know the plus attack. But every time you're playing Shrill, especially in this deck, because you're rarely playing one card hands um, or even two card hands at that, you're always going to have that plus. So you have a Shrill that's red Shrill that's going to be two for seven, or you have Ninth Blade that's nine for, or sorry, yeah, nine for nine. 
Shrill is just such a better rate, and it helps you on those mid-range turns. It helps you close out the game. It's better against old him. So, um, yeah, I would definitely probably play red Shrill. I just can't believe I didn't think about that. Um, and the next is, I didn't have any red mauves in my deck. I might play one red mauve and one red lead, or maybe just one red mauve or one red lead. Just to have that little bit of um, sort of go again, you know, with the attack uh, in the blade to sort of finish out the game. Because you can get fatigued in some of these scenarios against old him, or you can draw these sort of dud hands. Uh, so yeah, those are the changes I would make, if anything. Other than that, deck is incredibly strong. A lot of us probably know that by now. Um, but I do recommend that you practice, kind of learn the lines, specifically with something like Become the Arc Knight and Rattlebones, um, and just playing around with Sonata, maybe in a Goldfish scenario. And once you get that down, the deck, it doesn't play itself. It is a complicated deck, but there's a lot of pattern to it, right? So it will get much easier as you play it. And yeah, I think you'll win a lot of games. Well, anyway, thanks for watching <laughs> this deck tech. Let me know what you think. I'm going to throw up a sort of a little guide, um, just more tips and tricks, more matchup specific on the Arsenal Pass Patreon um, and just go into a little bit more detail. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can check it out on, on our Patreon. But if not, uh, yeah, deck list is in the description below. Good luck in any Blitz events you have coming up. And... I'll see you at the Pro Tour, I guess.